Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Thanks for re replying. I'm having, I'm in uh, Bozeman, Montana, and I'm having a hard time trying to find uh, something as to suit my needs here. So I did find one fellow locally, but he was going to charge me a thousand dollars for well, well over a thousand dollars for two hinges. Yeah, he's probably going to make them custom. Would be my guess. Yeah, he was, and he was pretty proud of them. And there's people well, in this neighborhood that would be more than happy to pay for them. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I can't comment about that, but I can say um, the mechanics of what you want to accomplish is like, you know, nuclear fusion. Um, it's it's a hard one to crack. So the the issue is it's all about where the vertical axis of pivoting is located. And right. you want to you want to hide yours. Okay, right. well, so first of all, that's going to be a problem for for anything, um, any hinge other than possibly a pantograph hinge, which is probably what that fellow was going to make a pantograph hinge. If you think of the door that would be on the side of a bus, I mean, like a commercial bus, a people mover, They're like right. a Greyhound bus, a Greyhound bus, right? When you lift those side doors, those puppies not only lift up, but they come out of the opening and lift up. So that sort of concept is is what is kind of what a pantograph hinge are. Uh, you'll see them on ships uh, and things of that nature. Now, having said that, um, you, so first of all, I think plywood is an awful idea. Even your piece that's there is warped, it looks like. You should right. not be making it out of plywood because you're going to have nothing securing it, I imagine. So, having said well, that, well, I was going to, I was going to probably, I've got some material here that I can take that out. Um, so, I've got some engineered material that I was going yeah. to attach to the bottom that will straighten that plywood out dead flat. So, um, that that those are just there for as a cut in. Um, just to keep my dog from falling in the holes. Yeah, I wouldn't even, I mean, laminating it would be great. I would avoid, I would just use structural lumber for the entire piece um, and avoid the, the plywood. Um, so the only thing that I came up, so when you're going to hide that vertical axis of pivoting, when you're going to stick it within the thickness of the door, you're going to have to compromise with how you treat that pivot style of the door. Mm -hmm. So I could, in, I could envision a couple of top pivots that you would see on doors that are hung on pivots. Um, because are you talking like a pivot hinge? Um, I, well, what I'm talking about is, um, stand by one moment. Okay, um, so a, a pivot hinge, a, a pivot that would hang a 150-pound door is going to have a bottom complete component and then an upper complete component. The upper component is a rectangular face plate that is mortised into the header. There's mm -hmm. also a door portion to it. Right. They're called walking beam pivots. You can, with a set screw, retract that pin all the way back into the housing. It, if you couldn't do that, you wouldn't be able to hang the door. Right, I'm envisioning right. if you mortised your sidewall for two of these top pivots, you would be able to retract those pins in, you know, and then get your door in place and then throw the pins into the edge of the material. Terry, stay at your desk, please. Uh, Corey's going to send you a call. Um, the problem with that, though, is you're going to certainly have to all nose that one edge, the pivoting edge. Right. Okay. Um, so that's the only thing that I came up with. Um, and I think it would work. I think I know that you're going to have to. Well, it, 
if you don't bullnose the edge, you'd have to give it a, a proud, depending on the thickness, you'd have to give it a margin. Uh, you'd have to give it a gap of say a quarter inch. Depends on, oh, you know, okay. uh, you know, it depends on kind of where you place the, the the I'm calling it the vertical axis of pivoting because I'm thinking of it as a door. Doesn't matter. Right. The same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you could do that. Um, or find a pantograph hinge. But I'm concerned about a pantograph. Are you going to hinge it on the leg against the wall? Yes. Okay, so I'm definitely thinking a pantograph's not going to work because it's going to want to throw that thing. Well, I can move. Now, that opening, that's just a basic hole in the floor through construction. So if necessary, I'm probably going, I kind of realized that I I can't take that all the way to the wall. So that opening can't, I don't have to meet a code out here for that access size. So I can uh, decrease the size of that to make the the so that the door doesn't set vertically so it sets more like a say 100 or 110 degrees so it doesn't come crashing down each time i open it absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you had mentioned you know a way of helping hold it open and a yeah. you know a, a a pneumatic strut something on a coupe of a car we sell those for mm-hmm. smaller roof hatches the problem with that is I don't have a way to determine stroke length. I don't have a way to determine pounds of pressure or force because I right. just don't have that skill set. Um, right. You would have to experiment with all that. Um, okay. But I, I think within one or two you know choices, you're going to be there. Um, now, let me ask you this. I, I'm... I'm Part of me thought, well, I could do a piano hinge because the piano hinge has a low profile. But on, I'm looking at your hinges and pivots page, and you have what's called a continuous gear hinge. Is that yeah. is is that something that would, if I kept that close to the surface of my of my how should I say it? Floor? Would that work? And, and then I would just see that metal strip that allows the hinge, the, the covers the gears. Yeah. The problem is the gear assembly is rather large on a, on a aluminum continuous geared hinge. And whether or not you recall seeing them, you've seen them, uh, on, on commercial jobs. When you walk into a, a sandwich shop, they could have it. Um, when the hinges or pivots have failed, they'll slap a continuous geared aluminum hinge on there. The problem is all of those are large. If you could mm. tolerate the knuckle of a piano hinge, that would be your best bet because they're, they're petite. If you could tolerate that, mm-hmm. and if your mortar line is going to be, you know, if you tuck that into your mortar line uh, and painted it to match the color of the tile, you might disguise it. Um, because okay. the piano hinge is going to bring that vertical axis of pivoting out. Right. It, it so is that where you don't... it... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did I lose um, you? No, no, I'm here. Um, okay. <clears throat> it, you know, be, a piano hinge is going to move the vertical axis of pivoting basically off the face of the door to a very small degree that will allow you to rotate that object around what is the jam, in your case, the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've got to be, you know, you've got to position that vertical axis of pivoting basically equal to the face or greater than what you're attaching it to. Otherwise, you're only going to get that thing open so far and it's going to start to bind without having an excessive gap. Right. Okay. So it, 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 the, the hatch itself, I would, I don't think it's going to weigh, there's two of them, probably more than 50 pounds. And my, my concern was obviously I didn't want to, I don't, it's in a, a, a workable space, so I don't want to keep hitting my toe on a hinge that has going to stick up for, you know, the barrel, what, anywhere from 
three anywhere from three eighths to say a half inch. But if I did the the continuous um, piano hinge, I could get that barrel down closer to say well three sixteenths. Well, you'd be able to tuck it in there pretty well. Okay. Um, there's yeah, there's no doubt about that. I think. Um, but the the problem with the piano hinge is that they don't have any swag. They're meant for full surface applications, so you're going to have a gap because of that. So if you laid that mm -hmm. hinge flat on the top of your table, it will lay flat. Not like a butt hinge that will hang a door. That can be opened and laid on your table, but because they have a swag or a bend in the leaf, it won't sit flat like a like a piano hinge will. So you'll have that margin between there because of that. Um Okay. At All the right. end of the at the end of the day, I'd like to know more about the custom hinges this person would make and if they're if they're truly the most awesome thing on in the world. <laughs> um but but I would look up pantograph online. I would love I'll to see you. it. I've I've I'll send I've you had a link. some I've had some clients in the past who have who have done that and it's just it's just the coolest stuff in the world. But yeah, I mean the the R and D yeah. time is enormous. Yeah, um, he's willing to build me well what he'd like to do is obviously he wants to build a metal frame. And then um it has a it's a two set, you have the liner and then you have what the door would be built on. And then he's got the hinges and it depend upon the weight of door, it's either two or three. Or four, depending upon the weight of the door. And it's, it is a beautiful, I mean, they're, they're, they are beautiful. And, um, I called him up. He's located here in town. Um, and they well, were, they okay. were just more than I was willing to spend. All right. Now I'm not enamored because all that this person is supplying is a floor door. And in floor doors, you can have, if you were to go into a grocery store, eh, I've seen them in I've seen them in a grocery store. There are access panels in the floor that you can't hardly tell they're there. And it's because mm -hmm. they have a terrazzo pan where they've put in their flooring so it disappears. You yeah. know, to the extent that they disappear. So that's just a floor door. There's nothing special about that. But everything I just said is going to be hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Um but it's a complete it is a it is an access panel that you'd see in a wall that goes in a floor that can handle traffic, human traffic, weight wise, you know what I mean? Not 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 vehicular. And it has a terrazzo pan that you can run your flooring into it because they need to hide they need to hide access panels. And that is yeah, that is super simple material. The uh the issue though is everything I just said is really expensive. Mm -hmm. Um really, really expensive. But that's I'm no longer enamored when you said they're gonna the guy will basically build a frame and give you a, a unit to drop in. Yeah, sure, that's easy. Yeah, I'm trying to work with your existing, you know, structure. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah, that's the issue. Um, but yeah, okay. that's that's a Bilco TER dash one. You know, that sort of thing. You know, I uh, it's a it's a it's a pan type floor access door. Uh, right. You'll see them in, in in fancy department stores where you, they got to get somewhere and can't can't. You can't have an access panel on the floor of the Chanel store. You know that. <laughs> True. Okay. So um, I'm looking through your piano hinges now. You're saying the knuckle or the the hinge, uh, concealed hinge. Um, of is not or or the geared hinge is just not 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 something that I should I should stay away from it. You you can put in an aluminum geared continuous geared aluminum hinge. The problem is that entire knuckle is large, very large. There'd be mm -hmm. no way to disguise that. It'll work. It'll work great, but you're going to see a big giant hinge installed in your if I walked into your house, I'd say, "Why do you have a 3-foot piece of hinge in your floor?" It would be mm. very obvious. Okay. The bottom line, I, I would, I would avoid it. I think the piano okay. hinge is the least evil of all on this. Okay. All right. Well, I'll probably order some a piano hinge from you. And do you have? Oh, I'll just look through your website. All right, Richard. I've taken up enough of your time. I do appreciate your feedback. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Admittedly, piano hinges are not our strong suit, so come back to me for something in the future. Um, a piano hinge is too easy to get from, from someone. We usually get into the more difficult stuff. So no hard feelings if you just source that from the local Lowe's, that kind of situation. Okay. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it. I do okay. have some in stock. I'll, I'll send you an email of what I've got sitting here that I can ship out. And if that works for you, great. Otherwise, you know, something more technical is, is more up our alley. Okay. All right. Um, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you. It's, it was, uh, good feedback and kind of, it's given me a better idea. Um, so yeah, I'll send you a link to his hinges. Let me know how it turns out. And thank you. Please do send that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yep. Talk to you soon. Bye. Architectural Builder Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.